See you in Diamond City. Always on good behavior, aren't you? You always pry this much into the motives of your traveling partners? Just the ones I find particularly interesting. I appreciate it. Too few folks can be bothered. Of course, in my experience, if you want to do real good, playing nice only gets you so far. I mean, look at Diamond City. A place I've been trying to warn of real danger. But every issue I publish, all I hear is, Oh, Piper, why don't you ever publish anything happy? Piper, why can't you write something nice for a change? It's enough to make me want to hang up my hat some days. Is Diamond City really in danger? It's not like there's raiders pounding on the gate. Are you kidding me? There is a very real chance the city leadership has been infiltrated by an institute synth. A synth under the control of an organization widely known to kidnap or murder anyone that stands up to them. I'd take raiders at the gate any day of the week over that. Of course, making sure folks are actually listening. <laughs> That's a battle in itself. Sounds like it must be exhausting. Huh. No kidding. But people, they deserve to know the truth. Sure, it can be scary, knowing what's really out there. A night doesn't go by, I'm not afraid some institute drone will decide today's the day to pay old Piper and family a visit. But it's worth it, because I know the truth. That's what protects us. Scared, huh? Could have fooled me. I'm pushy, not crazy. Honestly, these days I'm more scared for my sister. I don't know what I'd do if something happened to her. But I'm not the only one with something to lose. That's why people deserve to know what's out there. Good or bad? Couldn't agree more. How can you protect you and yours if you don't know what you're facing? Exactly. Most folks, though, they'd prefer a comforting lie. Not me. I've seen firsthand what the truth can do. My sister and I, we grew up way out in the Commonwealth. Tiny little settlement. Our dad, he was part of the local militia. <laughs> Keeping the raiders off our backs and the Mirelurks out of our latrines, as he'd describe it. Well, uh, one day, our dad turns up dead. His captain, asshole named Mayburn, claims raiders must have gotten him on watch. Well, I didn't buy it. I start making inquiries. Turns out, the captain, he'd sold out. Thought he wasn't getting paid enough to babysit the town. He was gonna leave the gates open one night. Let a group of raiders sack the place and take a cut of the profits. My dad found out and was gonna turn Mayburn in, but Mayburn got to him first. And I wasn't about to let that bastard get away with murder. I tried talking to the mayor, but he wouldn't listen. So, I papered the entire town in posters. Wanted for gross dereliction of duty, Captain Mayburn. The mayor sure wanted to talk after that. The town threw Mayburn out on his ass and were dug in when a very surprised group of raiders finally showed. Always on good behavior, aren't you? I try to be? Seems like you're doing better than trying. I appreciate it. Too few folks can be bothered. Of course, in my experience, if you want to do real good, playing nice... Uh -huh. I mean... Look at Diamond City. Oh, Piper... Uh-huh. So... <laughs> <laughs> because I couldn't agree more. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I've seen Art. right. Uh huh. Well, well, I didn't. He was my. Mm. I tried. To... You saved those people. No. Those people saved themselves because they knew the truth. But hey, I. <laughs> I'm sorry if I've been rambling. I just get fired up sometimes. It's just nice to talk to someone who, who actually seems to get it, you know? So, should we head out? I'll, I'll get a gun and I'll meet you there. We'll settle this. You sure manage to find your fair share of trouble, don't you? Is that a problem? Not at all. Honestly, it's just nice to not be doing it alone for a change. <laughs> In my line of work, things tend to get pretty hairy. I've been shot at, poisoned, nearly executed. 
Heck, until recently they called the lockup in Diamond City the Piper Suite. Anything for a story, I suppose. Someone poisoned you? Are you kidding me? I barely had the paper going before I got poisoned. First time, I just published an article about this cartel of caravans that had been driving up food prices in the city. Article went over well, even got a boycott of their goods started in town, so I figured I'd pop over to the dugout inn for a victory drink. I'd already taken a swig by the time I realized something was wrong. The Dean, he wasn't at the bar. The beer tasted off, even more so than usual. And I started feeling real woozy. I don't know what he slipped me, but I knew I had to get it out. I'm looking around for something, and there it is, the still, and I just start chugging moonshine. Honestly, I'm still not totally convinced it was better than just dying from the poison, but it worked. And while I was passed out on the floor, security managed to grab the bartender. He eventually ratted out his bosses, and they all got to share some time in the pen. Seems that execution didn't quite take, huh? <laughs> Thank God. I'd been working on this story about irradiated drinking water in Bunker Hill. I traced the water back to its source through these old sewer tunnels, and what do I find? The children of Adam, setting up like they own the place. Unfortunately, they found me just as quick. Turns out they were not fond of reporters. So, to atone for my trespassing, they decided to make a sacrifice to Adam. Me. <laughs> I'm kneeling there, about to get the boot into this huge sewer pipe, when suddenly I blurt out, Adam, he reveals himself! And they buy it. They pull me back from the ledge, and then gave me their induction ceremony. You are looking at an official acolyte. It took me a couple more days before I managed to sneak away, get Bunker Hill security to finally clean the place up. You've led an exciting life. Sure have. But honestly, now that I'm out here with you, I feel like I'm just getting started. Getting in trouble is what folks like us do. I mean, you and I are out here putting ourselves at risk so people in the Commonwealth can have a chance at a better life. Not for praise, or reward, or glory, but because it's right. I, I just wanted to let you know I'm real happy to be along for the ride. I wouldn't want it any other way. I like having you close. Oh, uh, thanks, Blue. That's, that's awfully sweet and unexpected of you. So you want to get out of here? We'd appreciate anything you can do to help us defend ourselves. So, you're not an idiot. Uh, thanks, I guess. No, I, I didn't mean like... I could just use some help. This isn't the sort of thing I'd normally bother anyone else with, but you just seem really good with people, and I've got this issue with my sister, Nat, becoming me. Coming, you? What do you mean? I'm just terrified she's gonna start taking up like her big sis. I mean, think about the life we lead. No offense intended, Blue, but personal safety doesn't exactly seem like either of our strong suits. I can't have her ending up like her big sister. Dodging bullets and running from all the people she pisses off. It's part of the reason I'm on the road so much. Part of the reason I'm here with you. I keep thinking... Maybe if I make myself scarce, if I'm not around her enough, she'll cool off. She'll just go back to being sweet, innocent Nat, paper girl, and all-around upstanding citizen. What do I do, Blue? So you're here to get away from Nat? Well, I mean, there are other reasons. But, uh, right now, the only thing I can think about is Nat. What do you think I should do? You don't get to decide who Nat's gonna be, Piper. She does. All you decide is whether you want to be a part of her life or not. You're right. She's her own person, and always will be. Thanks, Blue. 
Who'd expect wandering off with a stranger to turn out this well? They really don't make them like you anymore. <laughs> You're a hell of a friend, you know that? Just friends, huh? Uh, well, yeah. I guess, but I thought I thought so. Unless, you know, something changes. God, did it get hot in here? But hey, thanks again for listening. It's a real weight off my chest to be able to talk it out with someone. So, you wanna hit the road? I was just wondering where you and I stand. Well, it's awful nice to be traveling with someone who's got their head on straight. So, I'd say I'm good. Are things all right between us? Not a lot of complaints at the moment. And you can ask around. That is a rare occurrence. That's all. All right. Blue, you got a minute? Is something up? Well, yeah, but it's nothing bad. Just... What you said about Nat. I've been going over it again and again in my head, and what you said was right. I'm not going to be the deciding factor in what becomes of Nat. She's going to figure that out for herself. It's just... Sometimes it feels like the only things I've got in life are Nat and the paper. Having someone I can count on, someone like you, it's meant a lot to me. Not a lot of people want to hang around with the nosy reporter. Do people actively avoid you? Well, yeah. I mean, I didn't exactly start the paper to make friends. I just wanted to write the things I thought were wrong. And when Nat and I first got to Diamond City, there was a lot of wrong. Crooked guards, lousy infrastructure. <laughs> there was a hole in the exterior wall that was patched over with a bookcase. One bookcase. That's it. I started the paper more as an act of desperation than anything else. Turned out I wasn't the only one who wanted things to change. After the first couple of editions, people may not have agreed with what I said, but everyone was listening. It sounds like things got better. For the city? <laughs> yeah. For me. When that first edition hit the stands, I felt like I'd finally done something worth doing. But afterwards, things... things changed. People didn't want to talk the way they used to. It seemed that overnight I'd gone from being Piper, friend and confidant, to Piper, the nosy snoop. A lot of folks, they haven't treated me the same since. It started to feel like the only person I could count on was my little sis. That was a long time ago. People can't still treat you that way. You'd think, but if anything, it's gotten worse. Sure, I've earned some friends back in town, but now I've even got a reputation outside Diamond City. That's why I'm so lucky to have someone like you. You're not afraid of me like everyone else. I was sure that the paper would be the best thing I ever did in my life, but being here with you now, now I don't know. I've needed someone like you in my life for a long time, Blue. I just never expected I'd actually get them. So thank you for being the friend I can count on. It sounds to me like you're interested in becoming more than just friends. Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I never thought about you that way. Not that I'm always thinking that way. It's just blue. <laughs> I'm loud and pushy and constantly getting in over my head. Why would someone like you ever want someone like me? Is it so hard to believe that someone could fall for you? Well, no, no, but I don't exactly feel like you've seen me at my best thus far, Blue. I mean, how many relationships established in a hail of gunfire actually work out? Would you really want to end up with someone like me? You don't need to be flawless, Piper. You're perfect for me. Perfect, huh? <laughs> that's, uh, that's a new one. Well... Hmm. Well, I think you're perfect, too. <laughs> Goodness, Blue, I... I don't know what to say. You're everything I could ever ask for. Come on. Let's not keep the world waiting.
Your thoughts? Well, aren't I lucky they thought you out just for me? Your thoughts? Anything I can do? You just say the word. Your thoughts? What did I ever do to deserve you? I just wanted to check in. Make sure things were all right between us. I'm with the person I love. Helping those in need. I couldn't imagine a better life. Your thoughts? Most folks are just looking for a hand. All we gotta do is offer. That's all. All right. <laughs>